Can you believe the prices on these doors? It's like $9.50 for a $77 door. $10 you can get a good door. They're trying to close them out at Home Depot and there's a whole bunch of them. I would get them for the yurt, but um, they're too tall. They have some here for $4.50 unmounted. But see the height? It's too tall and I would have to cut it. But this isn't solid. I think it's empty inside. Wow, if you were building a house, look at these doors. You can pick them up for $10. Unbelievable. Sadly, I couldn't buy the pre-made doors because they're too tall. They're five foot six. I mean, they're about seven, six or seven feet tall, more. And the yurt itself isn't tall enough um, to mount that door. It's too short. I could try cutting the door, but those wall doors, they look like they were just framed with tiny little thin pieces of wood and they're hollow inside. I think they're meant for use inside the house, not outside. So cutting it would really weaken it and then water would get through and then it would start to peel and go bad. So I opted to get these um, 95 cent beams, about um, four or five of them for four or five dollars. And I'm planning on making this door right here. And I'll add, I ran out of wood, but I'll add some more cross beams with um, some fronds or some other stuff to try to make it stronger. But the idea is to actually try to screw this unit together to give it some more strength than previously. And as you can see, I measured it exactly to fit the, um, the tarp, so it'll be the size of the tarp, because that's as big as I can go. And then I'll have to figure out how to mount it and close off any um, remaining slots or open space when I attach it to the yurt. It took me quite a bit longer than anticipated to build this door, but this is what we've got going on right now. I do need to secure these um, diagonal beams. I think what I'm going to do is just tie them down with rope, cordage, because I can't really hammer it. The whole thing will fall apart. This wood's not very strong. So we'll, we'll use cordage to brace the, um, the beams, and we'll put the um, tarp on it. I do have a gap here, which means I need to get another support beam for this spot right here. And I need to close off the yurt by running um, more, um, more tarp. Then the unit's pretty much sealed. I do need to fix the flooring and block the wind from blowing up under there because it's tearing apart my plastic to keep everything sealed. So I'm just going to go through and like kick up the edges here and try to block the um, wind like this just need to move the edge so that it goes up and blocks everything that way the yurt is sealed and um, air doesn't go up underneath I had tried to design the door with a lot more beaming but I couldn't get them to attach easily I did try to tie this and it looks like I forgot to tie the bottom I may have to go back to using mask um, duct tape to try to get this stuff to hold. Uh, I wasn't able to assemble it out by the car because of uh, the um, angles and stuff. And I don't have like small screws. The, the board kept cracking. I had to drill holes and it got really complicated. So I just made the frame and brought it back here. I figured I would tie everything, but it's looking like I can't tie it. So... I'll leave it like this for now and see if it'll hold. The door, when it shuts, there's still a gap. You can see when I shut the door, there's a gap right here. So I'm gonna have to close this section off with another piece of tarp. And I still need to seal this junction where the door um, connects so that we don't have a huge gap right there. And the whole yurt should be fairly sealed other than the roof still leaking and closing off the floor so animals don't eat through here and come on in. But this should allow the yurt to be pretty, uh, pretty sealed to keep the animals out.